I, th I think I, I would argue that just about all the recent developments have got a genetic underpinning. I mean, if you look, I mean, every year there's a paper published by Jeff Cummings and his group um, from uh, the US, from, from, from Las Vegas. And uh, there's a very helpful sort of Alzheimer drug development review article that Jeff and his team publish uh, in Alzheimer's Disease and Dementia Journal. Uh, and of all the drug targets in there, the hundreds of drug targets that are currently being pursued, you know, at various stages of clinical trial development, I would argue that all of those have at least some level of genetic evidence uh, that, that they are involved either directly through human studies or perhaps indirectly through, uh, you know, models, uh, animal models of, of, of Alzheimer's disease. And so that to that level, I think genetics is already playing a very important role. But you've only got to look at um, oncology uh, and drug development today. There are, I don't think, any out any drugs today used for cancer treatment that are coming you know, have come through recent clinical trials that haven't had a very strong genetic underpinning. I think Alzheimer's disease as a field has a lot to learn from oncology, uh, and it's unthinkable, I believe, that uh, the genetics won't be play an ever stronger role in that drug development process, particularly as we get to uh, more pathway sp specific targets uh, where perhaps uh, not every individual with Alzheimer's disease uh, will respond equally well to a drug intervention. So it's going to be necessary to uh, think about companion diagnostic type um, opportunities whereby uh, an Alzheimer subject uh, is profiled and then matched to an appropriate drug treatment. And again, genetics has a, an important role to play there, I think, in the future.